But this is this guy, Richard Feynman. Hey, this guy was an atheist himself. He didn't believe in God, but it's his passion for life that he's obsessed for like common people. And, uh, you know, like just, just his vigor and passion. It's such a positive outlook. He was a true scientist. He, he used to always talk about the difference between what you think you know and what you don't know. And uh, I would say a lot of scientists now are, uh, are not uh, learning from the likes of Richard Feynman when they assert their confident belief in God, or conf confident disbelief in God, actually. Because, you know, uh, I mean, as I said before, science is like simulation theory and stuff like that are only thrown in the fists of scientists nowadays who are going to be, you know, very certainly confronted with the idea that maybe they are going to have to entertain, if not Jesus, if not Allah, if not, uh, if not Buddha, if not Atma, if not any of the so-called fictional gods, they will have to uh, confront the possibility of an intelligent, conscious creator, which uh, the data is now pointing to through simulation theory and stuff like that. So, you know, suddenly these uh, confident atheists that find so, com so much comfort in dismissing the act of God, well, the science is now presenting itself that this is now part of the equation and may be a reality. But uh, first of all, before I talk about an R scientist, I want to talk about Richard Feynman, who the guy I mentioned there. This guy's an atheist and he had a complete sense for her life. He was, uh, there's quite a few good documentaries about about him uh, available online, which are fucking excellent. Hey, no joke about it. This boy is a fucking, he's a very interesting man. Such passionate guy, you know. Uh, he discovered uh, what went wrong with Challenger, if you still remember that there. Challenger exploded and the entire team at NASA could not figure out what went wrong with the ship. They didn't have a fucking clue. They looked at the rings, the technicality, the fuel. They looked at it all. The you know, team of NASA scientists, the, the people that sent uh, man on the moon as a collective whole could not fucking figure out why the fucking Challenger ship crashed. But of course, uh, Richard Feynman went on there with his bright mind and, you know, bright fucking ideas. And he has this ability of being able to look at things afresh and new. Uh, when he was growing up with his father back in the day, you know, his father taught him to think differently. He used to say to him, you know, try and think like a Martian. He would say stories like, you know, you wake up every morning. He said, look at human beings, look how they act. You wake up every morning and as the sun is arching over the earth, people get up out of bed and the whole world over, as the sun arches around the earth, people are manically brushing their teeth. <laughs> all the way around until the earth goes around the sun and they stop and he says now not only is the sun connected to humans but they behave in a certain way uh you know correlating with the sun and he says no damn martian that must seem so weird and from an early age his dad had him thinking you know very much outside the box you know look at human behavior look at the materialism of life the physics of it so to speak and come at it anew come at it afresh you know, come at it from another point of view, which is funnily enough the name of one of the documentaries about Richard Feynman, which I would recommend you fucking check out. It's fucking great. He sits and talks to uh, an old science fiction writer, and they talk about how, you know, how they come up with ideas. And uh, Richard Feynman is talking to them. He says, you know, he looks at all the facts, and then tries and comes up with something new based on the facts. But when he's talking to uh, Arthur C. Clarke, famous uh, science fiction writer, he's uh. He explains to him how it's completely opposite from him. He comes up with things just chaotically in his mind and molds them into like a scientific sort of, you know, something applicable to a book in reality. So they're, they're both uh, similar in their visions of the future and the world, but they both came at it from a very different angle. But uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's an outside the box kind of thinker. So he went on the, the, the Challenger situation when it exploded in NASA, I think it was 1983, 1989, somewhere along them lines. I remember actually reading the story, hearing about it as a child. Like I thought, Jesus, you know, going to, going to the moon, going to space ain't all fucking glamour, is it? You know, people actually fucking die in that there. But, uh, but he was able to go on and look at the rings and he noticed there was ice crystals in some of the video footage and within uh, a period of uh, a few weeks 
he found out what none of the NASA scientists could find out and he discovered it was ice crystals freezing up on the rings, the old rings of the fucking of the fucking NASA fucking rockets and he quite uh, miraculously figured out the problem which you know furthered our fucking reaches on the space and not only that there but he says for life like and his, his, his ability to uh, you know make people learn things by explaining it simply one of his friends was talking about how you know they would read physics books and they could never get the gist of how experiments work but when they would listen to Richard Feynman's lectures uh, they would just be so easy they understand that when you would go back and uh, try and figure out how he taught you that so well you wouldn't really understand it was his inflection and his passion and telling you these things you know you, people people like fed off him and uh he had a friend an artist friend who was a very fucking interesting guy this guy he was big uh, part and he, he, he used to say to richard Feynman, he said you know you, you 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 look at the flower and you don't see its beauty he says i look at the flower and i appreciate the flower for what is it the, the well it is it's a beautiful thing and needs to be uh you know portrayed and expressed no he wants to recreate that and he was trying to like dismiss richard feynman as being a scientific thinker, thinker as being cold and detached but feynman said no he said I, I don't think like that he said i think very differently from that he says to me the processes of how the the light photosynthesizes on on the on, on the floor they create uh you know these beautiful bright colors that attract all our creatures in nature just so they can uh, you know distribute their pollen on those flowers he said he finds things like that far more fascinating fa fascinating than just simply the, the the surface beauty of a flower he says he thinks the flower is beautiful in many different ways just by its you know appearance he's a very fucking interesting man he great guy one of my favorite depressions when his sister fucking uh, Joan was a wee girl who she's now went on to be a prominent scientist herself just based on this story uh, Richard Feynman went there in the middle of the night woke her up she was just a wee girl you know he was just a teenager he's been anti physics since he was no age he out, he out struck his dad when he was about 10 and he started having forming mathematical equations that uh, geniuses were coming up with 100 years before he was figuring them out as a jack tot as a wee boy but anyway, he got his sister up out of bed in the middle of the night and he said, I f something that's going to fucking really make you happy. The way he sort of knew your interests and stuff. And she said, she got up out of the, the bed in the middle of the night. She goes, well, what is it? What is it? And he goes, come with me, follow me. And he brought her down to the, uh, the middle of a forest and she couldn't see nothing. And she was walking through all this dark, you know, dark trees and stuff and traveling down the ways. And, uh, he said look up and she looked up and she seen all these beautiful colors and lights and things happening in the sky and she said god jesus you know what what is that what is that and he said i knew you would love it he said that's called ori borealis he said it's one of the last mysteries in the world that nobody knows how it's been done but of course joan feynman's been a leading pioneer now and understanding what caused that uh, Oriborealis and Northern Lights and that phenomena. So he even knew, is that kind of smartness, he even knew that to her it would excite her mind and probably unknowingly let her into, you know, whole scientific career and like fucking going after that, that for me. And that's what I'm trying to say about Richard Feynman is he really had an ability to spike spark minds and just like his artist friend, they would embrace all our people's ideas of the world. He became a very adequate draftsman of painting pictures and stuff like that. He actually helped uh, discover the atom bomb. Um, uh, he worked on that there along with Einstein and all the rest of them. But they duped him and they think they were going to use it against the Nazis. And that said, well, geez, you know, we got to fucking get these Nazis fucking taken care of. But when he cracked the atom bomb, they were going to use it as a deterrent so the Nazis couldn't win the war. But when he cracked the atom bomb, the Americans went and dropped it on Nagasaki then, on Japan. And that completely fucking pickled his head because he wanted to do, use science for greatness. But they, they were politicians, you know, they duped his, his brilliance and they, they bombed Japan. And he literally had the, the, the wind of the world on his shoulders because he created this fucking astronomical weapon. And it was being used, you know, unfairly and could potentially end the world. And he sunk then into a deep depression. 
the man was already through several depressions in his upbringing. You know, his, his, his young wife died when he was very early on. She had tuberculosis and passed away. So he wasn't like a fuck, and he didn't have a great life, you know what I mean? But he had a great attitude and great figure and great interest and thing. He said, he said, he doesn't mind if, if there's no God. He said, if it's just an onion and we peel away at the layers and it goes on forever, he said, that's fine by me. He said, I can handle that. He said, there are people that's scary, but to me it's exciting. It's, it's, it's what is this, you know what I mean?